Webster's Dictionary defines curry as a sauce or food or dish from India consisting of pungent spices. Here we go. See, curry means something different depending on who you're talking to, and it rightfully pisses people off tremendously depending on who you're talking to. I am hard pressed to find a word that evokes so much emotion when it comes to food as the word curry, and kinda rightfully so. Today we're gonna deep dive into what the f curry is and why this even matters. See, in the West, curry is kind of this general term that's used for anything Indian. I mean, you look at a vindaloo and they say it's a curry. You look at tikka masala, you say it's a curry. You look at anything and it's kind of curry. Well, that word can evoke a lot of emotion, right? I mean, people from the East, <laughs> rightfully so, don't associate their food with one simple generalization. And let's face it. Neither should anyone in the world. It over oversimplifies something that is incredibly complex and diverse and beautiful, like Indian cuisine. But like all things, we need to understand where this word came from and why the heck we're using it today. Well, the word curry is actually an anglicized version of the word in Tamil, meaning curry. Well, curry means kind of sauce or relish for rice that typically uses curry leaves. Makes sense so far. The word curry appears in other Dravidian languages like Malayalam and Kannada and uh, Kodava as well. You see this kind of come up time and time again, and the meaning for it is typically a vegetable or meat dish that is raw or boiled. They obviously consider curry to be dry as well. That kind of flies in the face of anything you'd find in the West, but why is that? Well, when we look at archaeological evidence, it dates back to 2600 BCE for the actual use of a mortar and pestle to pound spices and flavor food. This was the beginning stages of what we know as curry or curry powder today. We'll get to curry powder, don't worry. But see, the original curry actually predates European arrival and presence in India by over 4,000 years, so curry was along way, way before any sort of colonization. The three basic ingredients into a typical curry was ginger, it was garlic, and haldi, or turmeric. See, there was this method that these wonderful archaeologists figured out, and it's called starch grain analysis. And these archaeologists at the University of Washington at Vancouver were able to identify this residue um, from ancient species of skeletons, uh, both in their teeth and on the pottery. And what they found is that these spices were pounded in a mortar and pestle and prevalent on their teeth. So curry is described in a 17th century Portuguese cookbook by members of that wonderful British East India Company. You remember them. And if you didn't watch that video, I'll put the link below. So here's the thing. At that time, there was this spice blend going around the south of India and it was called curry podi or curry powder. Well, that's not the entire origin of it. There's a little bit more. We see the first use of curry, C-U-R-R-Y, in an anglicized version of Hannah Glass's 1747 book, The Art of Cookery and Made Plain and Simple. Well, curry powder was commercially prepared at that time from mixtures of spice blends from the, uh, that they wanted from India that they took to the West. See, when the British occupied India, they got a taste for the food. Clearly, you can look at what's happening now. Well, at that point, there's something really important here. They wanted that taste of home. Curry became craveable. And let's face it, anyone watching this who's tucked into a really nice gravy before knows how craveable that can be. You guys are masters of spices. Of course it's craveable. But like all things, the British wanted to take that and make it for their own. So without demonizing too much here, a concoction that was very similar to garam masala was made. This concoction had a lot less of those warming spices and a lot more haldi. And that's how we got modern curry powder. The way that I see it, curry is a word that's been popularized by colonists to simplify what they saw as foreign cuisine. Now, that may be rough, but it's the truth. Today, there's become so much generalization from this, this word that it's hard to figure out what curry even means anymore. Think about this as just a point. There's curry powder, 
There is curry, what people kind of associate in the West from Indian food. There's curry paste. There's Japanese curry. There's curry leaves. There's Thai curry. And that's not even scratching the surface of how complex that word can be. When you think about roots like curry being used in Jamaican cuisine and the Jamaican and Indian connection, which is really fascinating, by the way, and I encourage you to check it out, then you see that curry has become a word that doesn't mean anything anymore. It's a generalization. Now, of course, this would confuse people. So curry is a word that elicits a lot of emotion as well. You hear a lot of stories of people migrating from the East to the West, opening school lunches in the West and getting made fun of. And let's just be honest, that's f***ed up. Curry became this slander. And over time, a lot of people had a lot of wounds as a result of it. People trying to immigrate had a really difficult time. And that's pretty It's one word has been used to perpetuate so many stereotypes, but this one word has also been used to really inspire a lot of people to try something new. The power isn't in a word. The power is what we give it. So in the description below, I wanted to highlight a couple of books for further reading that really helped me understand really what curry meant, its history and kind of its modern usage. So do check out those. As many of my Asian friends and many of the people from the subcontinent who watch this will attest to, South Asian food is about so much more than curry. And I'm sorry that words get generalized all the time. Don't blame me. Here's the thing. I don't hate the word curry. And when people say, oh, Indian food is curry, I'm very quick to kind of show them an alternative. But at the end of the day, yes, that word has been done to death. Yes, that word kind of sucks in some ways, but it's also been really good. It's opened up to people to an entire world of craveable food to share cultures, to share cuisines. Let's face it, I wouldn't be here talking to you right now if it wasn't for that word, if it wasn't for the craveability. Remember, the power isn't in the word, it's what we associate it with. See, there's a lot of food professionals, writers, bloggers, and chefs who like to demonize this word rather than looking at the positives and how the, world, the word has completely changed the world. And I understand. Wounds are deep. I will never fully understand what you're going through, nor do I make a, a case to. I will say a curry is amazing, and the people who have worked really hard to create dishes deserve that recognition. As we move forward... When we think about the word curry, we can change the narrative by talking about all of these dishes that don't embody that word. From the rich traditions of wedding podis and wedding foods, when I think of wedding foods and you think of things like Adirasam in Kerala, like these things that mean so much to a culture that have nothing to do with the word curry, well, these are things that are beautiful and passed down. See, at the end of the day, we know that Indian food is not about curry, it's about passion. It's about vibrance, and it's about Atma. I hope you learned something today, and if you did, feel free to hit the subscribe button, share this with your friends, and most of all, let's think about curry in the sense that it's a word that changed the world. And I get it, I'm just some random dude on YouTube, and I can't change people's perception of the word, but what I can do is inspire. And whether it's through curry, whether it's through rice, whether it's through achars, whether it's through anything. I think if we all come together, we create the narrative. Until next time, thanks for watching.